Hello everyone and welcome to Nordic Angles Fly Tying. Today we're gonna tie an instant classic and a fly that many fly fishermen has had at their box throughout their career and that's the woolly bugger. The woolly bugger is a very very versatile fly. You can use it in fish for trout in stream, you can use it for stock rainbows, it's a deadly coastal fly and it's just a, a pattern that's really nice to to have in your repertoire to 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 change up the fly and change up the, the the materials but the basic shape is just a really really deadly fly with this very very live tail and a little bit more of a, a dense body up here if i were to fish this on the coast i would probably choose a brass head instead of a tungsten head just because it's a little bit easier to cast it's a little bit easier to control in the wind but fishing in streams and fishing in stuck lakes or lake in general, I would use a tungsten head because it has a really nice wiggly effect when you have something that's so dense and so heavy like tungsten is. Um, but mangle it and just, you know, customize it for your fishing is what I would say. But uh, here we go, let's tie the orange and black woolly bugger. So we're gonna tie this fly. The hook I'm using here is a light stinger size 6 and I'm just gonna fit it with one of these Wopsy tungsten beads. Like that. I don't know what it is but a fly with an orange head is just... It, it, it speaks to me. <laughs> it wanna be fished. And I'm gonna take a black GSP thread Just make a little coat of thread, like so. And I'm gonna tie in the tail. And what I'm gonna use for this is just uh, the woolly bugger marabou. This is just feathers that is the right size for these kind of flies without being too long. I think I was just gonna take one of these feathers here and just gonna take the materials on one side like that just to take a bundle here and I'm just gonna make the tail slightly longer than the, the hook shank here like so tie it down on top And I'm gonna take all this excess material here and just gonna cut it a little bit longer than the head up here because then I can use this material to fill out my body and put it inside the, the bead. Just to make a little more volume on the body here. I'm gonna dub over this, so don't worry if it's not perfectly even. It just creates a nice foundation for my fly. Um, and then I'm gonna take my hackle, and this is just a 4B cape in black. You can use whatever you have at hand. I use a, a cock hackle for this fly, a rooster hackle, but you can use, you can, you can even use a hen hackle. It's just gonna make it a little more, a little more fluffy and a little more, uh, a little less rigid against the water. A little more woolly. A little more woolly, <laughs> Daniel says. But I'm just gonna take my hackle here, and as you can see here, the, the fibers is, is gradually getting longer, the longer I get down my thread. So I'm gonna tie this in at the tip. And the reason for this is because when I start tying in this feather, and I'm gonna start winding up the thread, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a, a natural taper with this fly, or with this feather. So I'm just gonna take the tip here, tie it in with the, the blank side, and what you call the, the dull side, inside with the hook and the shiny side out to you. There we go. Always make sure it's fastened right before you, 
go on because it's so annoying pulling out your heckle when you're starting to tighten. There we go. I'm gonna duck my hook. Duck. Dup my hook. And I'm gonna do this with a spawn semi seal. This col color is called UV Bleeding Black. And it's just a black dubbing, synthetic dubbing with some red flash in between. And I'm not gonna use a dubbing loop for this. I'm just gonna put it on the string. Making this. I actually had a viewer who explained to me what this is called in English because Daniel and I is just calling it a dubbing sausage, but <laughs> he actually had a term for it and I can't really remember right now. I promise I'll read up till next time. But I'm gonna make this dubbing rope, sausage, call it what I want. And I'm just gonna start dubbing all the way down where I just fastened to haggle. And I'm gonna create a, create a slight taper in this dubbing as I go up here. And it's actually just a pro that this dubbing is a little more tight to the body than if I use the dubbing loop because I'm gonna pull my hackle up through it, a palmer hackle to fly, and it's, it's a lot easier when the dubbing is, is it's tight to the hook, like so. Just put a little more dubbing. And with dubbing it's always easier to start with a little bit and just add instead of aiming for making the perfect size dubbing sausage before you start. And a little more at the head here. There we go. And then I'm actually gonna take my Rubber legs, these are just round rubber legs in blue and orange. I'm just gonna take out one here. I'm gonna cut it in half anyway. And we're just gonna take these and put them on the thread, like so, and take it out to the other side, and then. Just tighten your thread. One more. There we go. And I'm actually going to take these and cut them into approximately a little, uh, approximately the lengths I want before I wind the haggle because these are very grippy and when I start winding my haggle it's just going to grip all the fibers. So there you go. Before I start widening this wag haggle, waggle, haggle, I'm just going to wet my fingers a little bit and just pull the fibers back. This is going to make it way easier to just wind the haggle and not worrying so much about the hackles going forward instead of backwards. And I'm gonna aim for five to six turns here. See how these legs really want to grab onto the hackle fibers. And it's it takes a little bit of fiddling, but it's it's doable. And I'm actually gonna take this last hackle turn here and I'm gonna put it in front of my rubber legs here. Just gonna take two. I like that the haggle in front is a little bit more dense than the body haggle. That's why I'm using two turns. Just gonna snap off the stem here. 
I'm just gonna pull everything back here. I'm just gonna take three or four turns. Be careful not to take 10 turns of shred up here because you're fast gonna make a, a little bit of a gap in between of your head. And that's not nice to look at. So I'm just gonna make my fret go, my fret go in between here. A little bit of will be finish. And then I can take my dubbing teaser or whatever I want to use and just take a little bit of dubbing out here. Making sure I don't put it underneath the hackle because then it's it's all gonna fall apart. And it can be a little bit tricky with a black hackle on black body, but kind of see where it's going. And there we go. One of the most deadly flyers ever invented. Black and orange woolly bugger. So here it is, the black and orange woolly bugger. Really, really cool flyer. A really, really very, very effective pattern for trouts in saltwater species and lake trout and you name it. It's just a very, very versatile pattern and it's really easy to tie. So you can easily fill up a row in your box and have something that's just good for anything. As I said in the intro, tying this for coastal fishing or fishing where you're gonna have a little bit of a longer cast, I'll probably use the brass head instead just to get the weight down a little bit, but it's just, it has such a nice uh, what is it called? It's just, it's such a nice movement in the water with a tungsten head because it's it's so dense and so heavy that it's really getting this flecking, flicking movement through the water. Um, it would be really nice if you had some ideas or maybe a fly you were sitting there thinking, oh, I wish they would tie that one. Put it in the comments and we will see what we can do. Um, it's always nice to tie something new. Uh, but uh, like, subscribe to the video and follow us for more and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.